Hey, it's Rob. Corn seeds are pretty amazing. Corn seeds. Moving to the Midwest, I found myself surrounded by the beauty of cornfields. I look around and I am overwhelmed at the volume of corn grown from one little seed. Of course, I realized there were multiple seeds planted in the ground to produce this volume of fields that you see behind me. But somewhere, sometime in the distant past, all of this started from a seed. When a farmer is asked, what kind of seed is needed to grow corn? The answer is always the same. A corn seed, of course. What's funny is that I found if I ask anyone that same question, 100% of the time, I get the same answer. Now, I may not be the most knowledgeable person when it comes to agriculture, but it stands to reason that this is a common fact to just about everyone. Even little children come up with the right answer. I also found out something I wasn't aware of. There are actually laws in place called seed laws. These laws can cover a wide range of issues, but the end cause is to protect the proper use of the seed to ensure the fruit of the seed can be reproduced and provide the means to sustain life by those who are to consume it. The seed holds within it the potential to reproduce its own kind, and the seed laws are put in place to ensure this for future generations. This is so serious that if the seed law is not adhered to, the offender can be charged with criminal intent and sent to prison. This is no joke. Protecting the seed is of the utmost import importance because protecting the seed protects the sustainability of life. This is nothing short of amazing. Looking around at all of these cornfields, I realize that all this little seed needs is to be placed in fertile soil, watered and allowed to germinate, and miraculously, it reproduces more of itself. Ears and ears and ears of corn, all bearing the image of the original seed. Wow. What I find interesting is that when the seed is in its dried, unproductive, dead state of existence with no evidence of germination or growth, it is still acknowledged as a corn seed. Not just a generic no-name seed. No, this seed has an identity. It's a corn seed. The farmers know exactly what they want to grow, so they plant exactly the right seed to produce their desired harvest. I haven't found even one farmer that plants a handful of unidentified seeds out of an unmarked brown paper bag in hopes that just maybe the crop will become what he or she desired it to be. Nope. Each seed holds within it the identity of its created design, equipped with exactly what it needs to fulfill its purpose and what it was designed to produce, corn. These simple facts are indisputable. Scientists, engineers, doctors, nurses, lawyers, homemakers, construction workers, educators, politicians, they all agree. As a matter of fact, these simply stated truths cross the barriers of language, gender, culture, ethnicity, even the various religions around the globe. Absolutely amazing. It's agreed that a corn seed is exactly that, a seed that can reproduce and multiply corn. As I pondered this simple, undisputed, scientifically proven fact, I was overwhelmed at how we have placed such great faith into accepting the truth of the potential that lies within the corn seed in order to produce a harvest that sustains life. Yet as a society, we have accepted as normal the discarding of the human seed that holds the potential of a human life within itself. Why is it that the sanctity of the human seed, both male and female, carry the, carrying the image and identity of the life-giving creator himself is less revered than the corn seed, whose purpose is to sustain those to whom life has been given? To say the recent overturn of Roe versus Wade has created animus would be an understatement. Those on both sides of the issue are passionate about their perspective and each have a cause to promote. 
to politicize the issue of whether or not a life should be discarded is a gross misunderstanding. At its core, this issue is and will always be one of morality, which is the code of conduct that provides a civil order based on an understanding of good and evil. This morality allows us the opportunity to peacefully coexist based on the words of Christ, to love your neighbor as yourself. The potential of the human seed has been entrusted to us individually, that we as a community might ensure its safe passage into the next generation of humankind. How are we stewarding this most holy assignment? To vilify those who stand on either side of the issue achieves nothing. We have allowed ourselves to be lulled into a lack of reverence for human life by the ruling few who have chosen agenda over acumen. I will never say that there may not be a rare situation when the life of the unborn must succumb due to unavoidable life-threatening circumstances. Yet the reality exists that regardless of the reason or the justification, everyone touched by the decision to end an innocent, indefensible human life have themselves become a victim. The depth of pain settles deep into the heart of these victims, sometimes going unrecognized for decades, yet begins to shape the person they will become from that point on, manifesting itself in various ways over the course of their lifetime. This post is not a pro-life or a pro-choice debate. This is simply coming to a place of acknowledging that just as the corn seed is in fact corn, solely because its identity has been predetermined to be corn, the human seed is in fact human, solely because its identity has been predetermined to be human. There are many passionate arguments on each side of this issue, each with its own set of conditions that justify their desired result. But fully knowing what lies in the balance, the debate is no longer whether or not the seed is human, as this has already been determined. Rather, the debate lies in the answer to one question. Where does the creator of life stand on this issue? Not just the generalized blanket issue, but each individual situation. A simple exercise of morality brings clarity to this question. Am I doing what is ethically good and right? Am I rescuing the victim from the control of their oppressor? Am I taking a stand against those who do wrong or commit acts of violence against someone just because they're different? Am I providing relief for the fatherless and the widow? Am I truly protecting the life of the innocent? We must never take lightly the grave responsibility we have been entrusted with to care for the human seed. The life of both the born and unborn the full-grown adult, and the small human just conceived. We must not allow our decisions to be made as a reaction to crisis, or we may unintentionally destroy the very person who God was going to use to reveal His greatness to a watching world. The human life is God's greatest reflection of Himself and the most effective tool to prove His existence. Whether I choose to preserve or discard the life of the human seed, I must remember this one thing. When the day comes, and it's coming soon, I will stand before the creator of life and give account for my actions. Did I act on my own intuition? Did I make a choice with no regard for how he might feel about it? Did I protect life or discard it? On that day, I had better be certain that the justification for my action aligns with his. On that day, there will be no second chances, no do-overs, only judgment. Whether we ever took the time to inquire of him or not, on that day, the Creator will point to his Son, who has already given us his answer. Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. As a follower of Jesus Christ, it is both my obligation and my privilege to align myself with God's heart 
as revealed in his holy scriptures and stand with him to preserve the life of the human seed. In doing this, I'm also standing for you, the many victims who have fallen prey to this tragic deception. I have no desire to vilify these victims, but rather value them and engage in honest conversations. The world's narrative deceitfully propagates that the life and potential within the human seed carries no divine value, no predetermined identity, and because of this, it may be discarded without a second thought. I cannot will the identity of the seed to be anything other than what it was created to be. The point of created origin did not include me. As a member of the human race, neither my birth, gender, or ethnicity are an assignment I chose, but a gift I have been given, a privilege I accept, and a responsibility I am entrusted to carry out. In the midst of this moral crisis, I'm reminded that God's Son paid the ultimate sacrifice to provide forgiveness and healing to all who've fallen victim to the world's continued deception. While there's still time, let's ask the question of our Creator. Where do you stand on the issue of life? And what would you have me do? God bless you and your precious families, and have a wonderful day.